today is the beginning, right? Yes. yes. Today is the beginning. So, how did I get to this podium right now? It's a long journey. Uh, I was formerly executive director to San Jose Alberto Mission. I sheltered that house homeless men, women, and children. I'm proud to say that I'm the one that opened the women's part of it. I knew that the need was there, and I wanted to help our population gain the tools that they needed to become successful, and we partnered immediately with the social sets. Prior to that, it took a minute for me to get to becoming an executive director and a lot of steps. But I could not have made it if I hadn't experienced the things that I did, just like all of us. So within, this within the time of 2002 to 2008, when I became the executive director, I was navigating the system in social services in various positions, which gave me a well-versed uh, workforce education from employment to housing to mainstream benefits. But I think that I needed to couple that with something that was going to be valid with society. As soon as I came out of prison in 2002, I joined Roosevelt University to get my master's. I chose that because when I went into prison in 1991, Roosevelt University was in there giving education, people obtaining bachelors so that they can come out and find employment. So it struck me as, this is a university I want to be part of. So the, the heart of the, the, the matter here is that I was away for 12 years and nine months. At the age of 19, I was homeless. I was doing drugs and I was doing alcohol. I didn't have a role model. Somehow it clicked. When I got in there, it was survival mode, just like it is for all of us. We have our self-interest at hand. And I started thinking back, well, how is it that I end up there when I come from a good family, grew up in Puerto Rico, went to church every Sunday, so many factors are involved here. Some of them are external, some of them are internal. The internal ones are very important. Those are the ones that are going to allow us to process information in an appropriate way in order for us to make the right decisions. See, at one point or another, we did not have enough information available to make the right decisions. Something as simple as, I had a whole bunch of people telling me, don't join the gang. And I joined the gang anyways. That wasn't enough. That information coming at me wasn't enough. I wasn't exposed to nothing else but just the glorification of the gang life. And it appealed to me. I didn't have nothing to attach it to. Nothing that would pull me away from it. Right? Oftentimes, we are in need of something, and because we weren't in need before, we don't know where to go get it. We actually have to go through something to start searching so we can find it. I work for many agencies that were inside of the community, and the neighbors around them did not know what was happening in there. Because those people never had a need that led them to that. I moved on through the system and educated myself right away. Got two associate's degrees while I was trying to survive in there. It's not easy. Because you're still a member of a gang and you still have to do certain things. But because I come from a good place, I had the strength to overcome and proceed to better in my life. Just like you guys are doing. Regardless of the age, regardless of what has transpired, the time comes in which we are able to process information adequately in order for us to make the right decisions for ourselves and move forward. But it doesn't stop there. So you get information, you process this information, you make decisions. This is knowledge that you are acquiring. This is intellect that you are building. 
there's more out there. I said this is the beginning because your next step is to get acclimated with education. Wherever you go. Doesn't matter, city colleges, universities. I got out on October 18 of 2002. On January of 2003, I was at Roosevelt University's doorstep asking, how can I come here? At the age of 19, I knew I needed to go to college, but nobody took me there. Nobody showed me. How do I go apply? Who do I apply with? Who do I talk to? When do I make a phone call? I did not know. This time it wasn't going to happen. This time I was taking life in my own hands and I said, I'm going to jump in a train on parole with a bracelet after they give me permission, go to Roosevelt University and get in there and apply. Get accepted. I came out with goals. Goals are very important. You have to set them. Don't try to find your way around without your goals because you're going to be all over the place and you're not going to get to where you need to in the time that you decide. When I came out, I have four goals. In order for me to integrate back into society, I needed to establish a family, engage in a career, continue my education, and buy a house. I knew off the bat that if I go in front of an employer and they see a wedding band in my finger, I'm already a promising candidate. At that time, I needed to show that I was responsible enough in order for me to be accepted. My first job was given to me because my brother worked for this company. And I excelled to becoming from consultant to full-time employment and resource development. That's where my career in social services began. I started thinking to myself, is it true what they say that if you got a background, you cannot find a job? I got this job because my brother got it. So let me start looking for employment. In July of 2003, I became the housing counselor for Proviso Leyland Council Community Action in Maywood. A job that required a bachelor's degree, and I still had it. Why do you think I got the job? Because I told myself, you have to. You market yourself. I went in there and I told that employer, I'm going for my bachelor's degree, and I will change my major right now for you. What do you want me to get my major on? He said, you're hired. <laughs> Right there, you're hired. You have to let the employer know that you're serious about that. It's not about sending one resume to a hundred places. It's about sending a hundred resumes to a hundred places. Because each resume has its own story to tell. I've had people, now students, come to me and say, can you look at my resume? They have customer service. I already qualify you. You could work in a fast food restaurant. You could work at a university administratively or clerical. You could work for a social service agency. Just with the customer service piece of it is how you put it out there. It's how you convey the message. And if you go to a thesaurus and you look at the different ways in which you can say customer service, you're able to apply that term specifically for the company that you're going to apply for. You gotta use these resources to help you out. Who was gonna say that after 13, 14 years, I was going to be the assistant provost at Roosevelt University, my alma mater? I said that. I said I'm gonna do my time in social services. I'm gonna run San Jose Little Mission for about five years. The research says that five years is about average for a executive director before they start getting burned out. And believe me, I was getting burned out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That was my passion. From $440,000 agency to $1.2 million in a matter of five years. Recognition across the city of Chicago as one of the best kept interim housing programs. The city of Chicago said, Mary Ellen Karen said that I was running it like a school for Catholic girls. No offense to Catholic girls. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I held everybody accountable. 
you have to hold yourself accountable. It's your responsibility. Now you're coming to the end of this road that's going to catapult you to the next one. Simple as that. I know it's hard when you don't have support. Support is the number one cause of homelessness. The number one. Because if you have support, somebody will lend you a hand. You will not have enough in that situation. Goes with jobs. Many of you say networking. That's support. You have to network. Very true. I have three mentors. I have a whole bunch of consultants that are now my friends, and we convey information back and forward. I have such an amazing group of people that are backing me up. At any given time, there's no time to slip. No time to slip. You have too many people backing you up to let them and yourself be down. And this was apparent when, a week ago, I made a call specifically to my network, and the people I called stepped up to be next to me in front of the prison and review board when I filed for my clemency. And to be able to see them there is just an example of the lights that you touch and that you can continue to nurture that to be your support. College is difficult. It costs money. But think about the increase in income that you're going to have if you move on to the next level. And you are the only one that can put yourself a barrier for that one. The world is really yours. After I finished my bachelor's in 2005, I said, you, I'm going for my master's and I'm going for my doctorate. I finished my master's in 2008. I'm starting my doctorate this year in July. It's the goals. Put them out there, make them happen, make them a reality. I saw myself working with our populations, underserved families and individuals and kids. And I wanted to be their support because I did not have it at one time. And I wanted to show them what support was so that they could be of support to other people. That's why Annalisa does what she does. She's all over the place, helping agencies restructure revamp, make sure programs are being administered in an appropriate way. You pay it forward now. From this point on forward, you pay it forward. I gave you guys a packet. Look it over. If you want more information, you can sign up on the little the card that is in there. Um, very, very happy about this. Mom, I'm very honored. You guys are welcome to come to the university and I'll give you a tour so that you can see if it's something you want to do. And I'll even connect you with city colleges if you want to. Again, you don't have to come to Roosevelt necessarily. Just get an education. I want to thank you for having me. I appreciate it.